start. So, well, first of all, I did run the project and you know some some issues right away. Like it kind of stacks, and you will see that this uh, well it broke and it threw me out. I don't know if that was on purpose, but I look a little bit inside the code now something specifically to when you're doing you know stuff like this in right away in visual studio is the usual logic is you'll have a, a, f a loop okay an endless loop like this so you will do something like this okay so that's your entire loop in terms of unity that will be like running the update okay so if we try this of course this will never run now because we will always be in here you'll just get the screen okay but that is your main loop so if you do console.read read line or read key or whatever okay so i'm here and i can just write and it will do the loop and loop and loop again okay that's just for you know when you're doing things in uh, visual studio without the use of any engine or stuff like that just some tip for you so we're going to use this uh, in a little bit but let's go over yeah yeah so basically yeah exactly because all software are just one string of code right so you do not want to well basically the idea behind it is you make an infinite loop so it always runs your code unless of course the user wants to exit that's the, the main idea of this of course well it was always like this because everything is in a serial format of course um, so that's the first trick you will ever learn i guess when doing a program how to do an infinite loop to just cycle your code all again okay uh, of course that's something else uh, from what i wanted to to cover for this now let's go right into your code i see you, you create a new instance of a class that's game that's a game mm, it doesn't it's not really needed in this case to have just a class for a game unless you're going to have a lot of different types of games inside your game in this case inside your program then mm, you don't really gain anything from it is what i'm saying what you can gain however is if you have some persistent values and you're going to be recycling for example if you do this for a new game or loading a game you're basically it's it's a nice way and to reset all your variables without and making sure there is no any you know any variables leak from one game to the other i don't know okay like the forum post or something and i was saying that that was like a, a good um something good to do in general yeah okay it doesn't matter um, in in unity for example you get this for free by just you know clicking play i'm just going to give you the yeah. equivalence to unity as well i just found out that i had you muted <laughs> in when recording all the video so oh, no worries yeah anyway so i just turned it on now so it should be fine anyway so okay apart from this this is not really any error and i'm not really we're not really here to just say you know maybe this maybe do it a little bit better more than it's an error or not uh but so what, what would the other would i just initiate the uh, main menu from here and then do what, yeah do what I Exa exactly that here? exactly that you're going to be creating well we need to create a system that handles the scenes okay your scenes in the game in terms of unity that will be everything that you might have there the buttons 3d objects sprites whatever okay since we're doing this straight from visual studio we have to write all that code ourselves okay, okay. Uh, but even before we go to the main menu we need of course a way we're going to be recycling 
things that are going to be showing onto a program. So we know for a fact that each scene we're going to be using is probably going to have text. Well, first of all, we know we're going to be, be using scenes. I'm using the name scenes, but you can, you know, you can uh, name it, name them whatever you want. It doesn't really matter uh, in this case. Uh, I'm just using scenes, so it's more similar to how you will use it in Unity. Okay. So is that, is that like is that like um, like in Unity you have your start function? Is that is that what you're like something no. like that? In Unity you'll have your your scene, your your starting scene. The start function is part of the loop. Okay. okay, but Unity checks because Unity uses game objects. Unity checks when a game object is running or when uh, a component of a game object is running. Uh, all that's part of the mono behavior, which is mono behavior is basically when they first started creating Unity, they were basically going where they were writing stuff like we're going to write right now. Okay, so that's kind of low level, but the purpose of this exercise or what we're going to cover is to give you a little bit of a to get you into the mindset of reusing and encapsulating your methods mm -hmm. okay so we can use them in a lot of different things so <coughs> let's show in the video exactly well let's start with reading going through the code so uh, as i said everything in our program is going to be using since okay in terms of prog programming, a scene is just an object, but because we have all classes are objects, we're going to, you know, categorize them ourselves and call them something else just so that we do not confuse ourselves. Okay. Now okay. the, well, starting already, we can see that when you instantiate this or whenever you're going to call this, it doesn't really make a, a lot of sense over here. The first thing that I would like to, to take a look at is again we are showing something onto the screen okay we are showing something uh, on a program we're showing something to the player the user or whatever you want to call them so over here you have written it of course by hand now thing is this will be still part of a scene and we do not want to be using console write line and basically hard code all of uh, the texts like this every time we want to write something same with the whether well, any other one uh, any other state well that we're going to be having where was that one that you sent me from discord which one was it yeah that, yeah the scene class that was it's what i attempted when you asked me okay um, now we're going through it that's kind of uh okay that's kind of the the logic but uh, I'll show you how we're going to do this without even needing to worry ever about uh, a scenes, okay, about what's going to be written and how it's going to be written. So, and did you delete it, the other one that was, uh, you know, about picking gender? Or that should be in there. Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, main menu. Okay, main menu. Um, okay, so as you can see that, well, the main problem is uh, well, not a problem. It still works. It is still a fine way to do it, to, of doing things, and uh, you know, basically creating a simple software. The problem with this is it doesn't scale. And if I want to add like 50 scenes or 100 scenes or how many scenes that a game or whatever might need, of course. It's going to be a nightmare, obviously. So, how we should be thinking of this? First of all, we know our first need is we're always going to be using scenes. These scenes are going to be changing. And those scenes will always contain some kind of text. Okay. In terms of Unity, the text will be replaced from 3D models, 2D stuff, whatever. Animations, you know, whatever. So... I'm just going to go onto the program class and I'm going to comment out yours. So I'm okay. I'm going to yeah, I'm just going to write the class over here, but it's usually you know not good practice to have them all in one file. I just want to be seeing all of them right now. 
okay not close it so we will basically create a new class and let's call it my scenes oops so we already know that will some all all scenes are going to contain some kind of text right so what we need to create now is a method that it will show us whichever scene we have we are having it will basically output the text without really caring what the scene is we only need to know that it has a scene and it we want we want us to show our text okay so let's call this actually i have one thing wrong over here we want the class to be in its own class and not under the class of program so what we need to know is i'm just going to say show or render would be a little bit more correct render scene okay So inside my while loop now, I'm going to just drop the render scene. And this will handle, and yeah, because this one is static, I will have to make this static as well, which is fine in this case, because we're only going to be rendering one scene at a time, of course, because there's always going to be text. We can, of course, join scenes together. So it's not really that big of a, a deal or problem now the other thing that we can do is basically well not basically we need to have a current scene we need our variable that is going to be used to render that scene okay here's one small issue well it's not one small issue the main because it is outside of our infinite loop this will only run once in the lifespan of uh, of our program okay so maybe it will worth it if we just make this a static kind of scene now we can use this scene over here and say first of all we need to be checking if the current scene is null if the current scene we want to render is of course null we cannot do anything this is an error so we need to do something about creating an uh, or you know assigning a scene in this case okay so let's say let's see well first of all the easiest way will be to just do right line current scene okay so let's try something i'm going to do on my current scene i'm going to instantiate a new class of the scene okay because if i do not instantiate this it will remain null it it is a memory address but it doesn't have anything yet it's uh, not not defined yet. so i'm going to instantiate my new scene and of course because we do not have anything and actually we need to write current line to text, not just current scene. Otherwise, it would just give the name of the of the class. Don't want that. So, and yeah. So we need to also add something on the text, just so that we have something to see. Okay, I'm going to say test scene. Okay, and let's just hit play over here. Okay, so every time I hit and uh, right now i'm going to be getting my test scene okay. okay so what else do we need onto a scene we have our text down which means if i get like 20 scenes over here all i have to do is change the text in this and i know that my render scene will always render it it will always show the scene right do you understand yeah. the logic behind it like if i'm going to make the main menu or where was it main menu over here i don't have to write this for each one of course we do ha need a way to ha to create the scenes but i do not have to go through all of this every time i want to to do something okay i know that 
So basically I'm saying I do not have to render each scene independently in its own script. I know that my rendering happens here. So all I have to do is create more of this for its logic we're going to be making. Is that understood? Wait. All right, I'm gonna, do you mind if I go through this real quick? Yeah, sure. So I so know I understand this. So you're creating a method with the render scene. Yes. And you're you're specifically putting in the in the if statement that if, if there's no scene, you just return null. Yeah, that's entirely. that's basically just to avoid an error. If I remove this, it will not n nothing will happen right now because I already create my scenes. But if I comment this out and hit play, actually I didn't save. No, well you get an error that there is a null because this is just uh, you know an except just to catch a case that I might forget to assign a scene. Most likely that can't happen, but you know, we are, it's just a precaution for me. Okay, so forget the if, if you want. The way <coughs> the matter, what matters most is to basically uh, understand the, the way we are using objects instead of different classes, we're using objects and we're using methods that reuses the objects agnostically without caring what the data is. So this is your processor, this is your data. And basically this is what you saw to the to the end user. Okay, so data, end user, and your processor. If you, if it helps you understand it more. Okay, okay. is it all clear over here? So, yeah, so I'm just, uh... Just going through the process here. So you created the my scene, like like you said, the data. Yes. And then you're calling to it uh, with the current scenes, and then from there. The current scene is basically the current data I want to to change. I'm going to show to the to the player. Okay. So basically, think if you have a if you have a book, it's only one page of the book. Okay. We're going to be changing pages, of course, and we're going to be changing what we're showing to the user. Okay. Is it understood? Any other? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of mentally stamping this into my brain so I, I remember this correctly. Yeah, the video will be on YouTube as well, so you know, if you want oh, yeah, that's, that's to catch true. up, yeah, you come from that. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm good to go. Okay, so let's do something a little bit slightly differently. We can basically just, instead of having, yeah, instead of having this, you know what, what I want to do is to basically just make a variable in uh, the signature of the method and just use that like this. But that can confuse you in the future. So do you understand what's actually happening here? What's the difference to this? It's virtually no difference, but it's basically just passing in the render scene, it passing the scene, so it's all encapsulated here without this method looking on an outside variable. It will only work with the variable you pass over here. Okay, mm. so with that in mind, you can basically just ignore this variable entirely and it will play over here. But with what we have to do, we have to be doing over here and how we want to be changing since so much, I think it will make a little bit more sense if we make this into a class, if we just keep it using the class variable. Uh, this is just something I, I kind of thought of right now, but come to think of it, it will be a little bit better if we just use the class variable. Anyway, ignore this for now. So the next thing we want to do, be doing over here is we need a way to for the player to actually interact with uh, with us and with the okay. well basically with each scene. Okay, each scene will have some will have some options. Yeah, okay. So now this is kind of uh, simple but we need to make this a little bit for us a little bit easier to add all of this stuff. So we're going. I'm going to create. Well, actually, we're first going to do it simple, and then we're going to 
to make it a little bit more, you know, uh, sophisticated. So I'm just going to create a few an array of strings and I'm going to say answers or, you know, target answers or whatever. So okay. we now need this. It's not something we want to show uh, onto the player. Oh, well, not all the time, at least. So once the player reads or waits, uh, writes uh, something onto our console, we're basically going to have to go through each of these answers and see if it's something we, yeah, if it's something inside the answer. Okay, is that uh, understood? Yeah, so instead of using the very complicated line of... Yeah, instead uh, of using switch uh, for it's all of this, because if I wanted to say if the player says south or if it says something more elaborate, I will have to go and write case did something for each one of those. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I kind of, if you go to the game state um, part of their... I guess it'll make it easier for this stuff. Or yeah, exactly for this. Exactly for this. Okay. okay. So, and okay, let me delete this one. So, yeah, so we'll, instead of me using the uh, very, uh, like I had it like just ifs and um, and or operators to in a long line of answers, you're using an array to call from that without, without it being as over redundant that's what i'm what i'm getting yeah we want to have a little bit uh yeah basically for us to make our life easier we want to create the tool that whatever you they write whatever the user writes it will go through a list of answers for that current scene okay mm. without have without us having to create a new script all the time just to get that uh you know just to get the the correct line for for whatever this does so let's let's see it in actual code well basically we need to take our console line our read line and this will return us a string of course and this will be the line the user wrote so we need to process now the data and we can split it in its own case, or we can even split it, have it in here. I'll, I'll just split it so it's a little bit easier. And we will say process line. And for this one, I'm actually going to use a signature onto string, uh, onto the method, not the string, of course. Uh, let's just write user line or whatever you want to call this. So since I know my scene is this one, I can basically go for, okay, I'm just going to do this a little bit dirty. So I'm going to say for each answer I have in my current scene, we can basically check if string dot uh, equals our user line and our item like this. So basically what this is, without knowing the case of this and or any other case for for example, without knowing any of any string you have over here, we have an if statement if the player wrote that. Now keep in mind comparing strings is usually a no no. In in the case of this software, of course, it's a very basic software, so nobody cares to tell you that. Okay, if you read online, there's going to be some people, you know, complaining about this, but whatever. The software is just five lines or, well, 30 lines uh, big, so nobody cares. And, but in this case, it will work fine. The whole reason for this exercise, of course, is to get you thinking more into reusable code and in ways mm -hmm. things happen. Okay, as we've said, yeah, okay, the main processor, but basically this is the processor. This is what we show to the end user and this is our data. So let's try this with the answer. Okay, so we're going to do 
press one or two so uh, then let's say if you press the correct the correct code we're going to say console right line let's say item or let's say the user pressed plus item okay if of course I press the correct answer so now we have to actually populate those answers and that will be we can do this by simply doing answers and I think we could just do it like this and we can say one two okay so I'm just going to click stack attack so we're playing and uh, what did we forgot and seen okay let's see we're doing something wrong yeah we're doing we are writing the the class not the text of the class okay hit stack attack so press one or two i'm going to press five of course nothing happens we need a check for when that this happens when a player of course plays something wrong but if i press one yeah that still doesn't work okay let's see why though so let's do some debug code over here i'm going to say item and let's say answers or i'm just going to write a i want to basically just write in the console every answer i have and the raw user line we got here just in case oh yeah so yeah ignore that entirely we forgot one major thing is we basically forgot to add the line over here we were never calling the method that's why we never got that so but since we are here let's also get if the the user has a wrong answer let's also you know create that so i'm just going to do a return if we find the correct answer i'm going to do a return so i can just write down here and we can do right line not a valid answer okay let's see oops let's hit play so i'm going to click to click five not a valid answer okay press one user press one user press two Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you see the way I did it in game state, I, I had to do a lot of writing code. Like, yeah. Gymnastic. Yeah. So if I wanted to yeah. create like ten cases, all I had to do is basically do it from here, right? Mm -hmm. And whatever. Yeah, I'm going to have to copy this. So if I click play, write test, user press test. Okay, so with just that, we basically have our, our view, our processor, and our data. So that is an entire software. We need to know, or well, we just need a way to create, uh, to basically tell them that, you know, if this is correct, we can move forward change our scene this scene is done okay. so here's a really quick and dirty way to do this i'm going to create a static my scenes i'm going to create an array so let's see let's initialize it first this as my scenes uh, i'm just going to create let's say maybe three scenes I don't know uh, then I'm going to keep it to two cases we're going to encapsulate this a little bit more later but I'm just going to keep it for two cases so 
first case will be back and second case will be next scene or next whatever and for scene we're going to say this is scene one and actually we need to encapsulate it in this case so let's do scene one let's do it like this ignore all that okay and I'm going to copy this two more times I'm going to change the index inside the array you understand what I'm doing here right so you have a general understanding yeah I'm basically just creating an array with uh, my scenes and mm -hmm. each scene will have different data but if I click next I'm going to be going to the next scene that I mean and if I click back I'm going to be going to the back scene to the previous scene basically so I'm going to be cycling through my scenes the only way to know that we are cycling through our scenes is of course with this is scene one this is scene two this is scene three okay, okay. so the well first of all let's see and okay our scenes however are not actually anything they are not actually in my current scene so another thing we can do is to basically have a static int for scene index the index we are currently in so if I do a get on my current scene I can basically just return me scenes and scene index okay so basically well, this will return yeah so that's basically it's just a shortcut in this case okay uh, this yeah of course if there is no scenes over here or if this is outside of the array of this you're going to get an error but in our case we already created three scenes so now we need to know which of these answers we actually have so right now the code we have doesn't really differentiate an answer it just checks it's just a string comparison right so it just checks if the the lines are correct with what the user wrote but it doesn't actually have anything inside it doesn't know what to do so we need to create a new class right now which is going to give us and uh, let's call this answer and that answer of course will have an id but in this case the id is basically what the user wrote so if it says back that id is going to be back if it says next that id will have to write next but all i want to do is well right now all i want to do is differentiate between next or back so i'm just going to say is next and then instead of having a string array I'm going to use an answer array okay I'm going to use an array of this class so of course this now will be a problem keep in mind that this now compares the item with the actually the answer uh, dot to string so basically this the user line will compare this with answer which is a class name and of course we don't want that we want the item dot id to, com to be compared with. so of course we get all these errors because we actually need to instantiate those classes so because I'm lazy I'm going to delete these two and we're going to write them in a bit so we're going to create for the answers we're going to create a new class of answer and we're going to assign it as id equals back oh, come on okay this needs to be let's see okay 
Okay, this complains, but I, th I think we can just give it like this. No. Oh, I don't remember the the shortcut. Oh, yeah, this is a string, so this needs to be a new answer, first of all. So that's co correct. Okay, that's correct. And uh, this now will be next. And because I also want to change the variable for this, for is next, I'm going to add is next equals true. And of course, I'm going to add the is back to false. Okay, then I'm just going to copy paste this. And I'm going to change the index values and of course the text. So we're saying scene two and scene three. Now you're not talking much, so are you confused? No, I'm just trying to follow along. Just trying to Okay, so basically this is a shortcut of creating a new a new class and adding it into into the array we have over here. Another way to do this would have been to just do since two dot answers equals new answer two, and then you will have to create your first answer. For example, f dot id. Let's keep it lowercase. F dot is next false. Okay, if that confuses you, it's basically this. Uh, a shortcut way to to write this into just a single line command. Okay. So yeah, ignore that. It's just a way to to write this. Also, this don't really matter because the way we are going to create our logic over here is you basically can actually read your scenes or your entire scenes, all your data. You can read them from a file inside your well just a text file for example and that will actually create your scenes later from that from just data you have on, on a notepad text uh, i just want to you know to separate in your mind what is data what is processor and what is rendering in, a, in this case of course rendering is pretty simple so uh, where was i so now we have we are comparing the user line with the ID. Okay, so with that is instead of just saying user pressed, we can actually check that if the answer we have over here, so if item is next, if it's not next, we still know it's correct. If it's not next, of course, it's going to be the previous, uh, it's going to be back since we only have two answers in this case. So I'm going to take my scene index from here. Uh, if it's next, I'm going to do scene index plus plus. If it's backwards, okay. I'm going to do uh, yeah. scene index minus. Okay, you get it yeah. now how how this is going to be. Yeah, yeah, you're pushing up in the array instead of using the switch statements. Yeah, instead of just checking, we actually have logic right inside the answer itself. Of course, this is very basic logic. It's not really mm -hmm. something. Uh, that you know complex or sophisticated but I'm going to show you how delegates work as well so you can basically replace this with that with uh, some behaviors you can actually stack uh, uh, on top of each other so you can you know you can get the, the ball rolling so but, but before I, uh, I want to say like I've had a hard time understanding arrays just like just like I have a hard time understanding loops but this definitely, this, this little exercise here is kind of helping. helping. It's helping. Yeah. yeah, it's helping a lot. So basically, a loop is something we want to be running for, you know, for not just one object. We want to be running for a lot of objects. It's behavior we want to run a lot of times. So I do not have to write each case independently, as we had in the in this case. Okay. We're well, basically, because... All this is doing, of course, is comparing this. This, The problem with this, or well, not a problem, it still works. It's still a, a way to, to do things, but it's not scalable. 
Okay, because if I had to, if I, if I had 50 cases, you will have to write all those cases by hand like this. We of course do mm -hmm. not want yeah. to do that. So you see that 50 cases of this will have been something like 100,000 lines or whatever. But in this case, it's just like 10 lines doing all of that. Yeah, that's definitely a, a lot cleaner too. Yeah. So the other thing, of course, we need, because we're using scene indexes, if we go over the amount of scenes we have, there's going to be a problem. So we need to make sure, to always make sure, you know, that if we are over the length, reset it back to zero. And of course, if we are below zero, So let's give this a shot. We play. So this is scene one, and I'm going to say next. This is scene two. This is scene three. Okay, and you see that this keeps playing. If I right. go back, That's I'm going. Okay. So another exercise for you to understand also because you have a problem with loops. You see here that I'm actually writing all this by hand, right? So if I wanted like 50 scenes, I will have to go 50 times, which is of course terrible. So let's yeah. encapsulate all this into a single method. So I'm going to do a void or well static void because we are in a static class. Actually, static class. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, it's, it's because it's the first class of the program. So that's why it's static by itself, whatever. And we're going to say, let's say, create scene, string text. And let's see. Well, actually, we just want to do it like this, I guess. So that's very create scene. Then I'm going to copy all of that. And let's think. Now we're using arrays. We could use a list, which is going to make our life a little bit easier. I don't know if you have used lists before. Not really. Um, well, it's some of your tutorials that I watched that I followed along and yeah. use them on some just test projects. Yeah, basically, lists are kind of uh, more complex. Well, not more complex. It's arrays that give you a little bit more room to move to with. It's because in a scene or let's say scenes list, in a in yeah, a doesn't it go array list and dictionary? Yeah, dictionary is another thing. It's another useful thing, which is also going to be useful if you want to be going a little bit more asynchron asynchronously or without knowing the index or without caring for the index, for the index. Uh, exactly, we can actually use a dictionary to get answers. Instead of comparing this ourselves with string.equals, we could use a dictionary here instead of the answer where we catalog the ID and we use that we use the the dictionary because it's much faster for us to to use that instead of going with string dot equals but that can be that can come later we still have uh, you know stuff to do over here so uh, yeah so basically what I was saying the the list are a bit easier to work with in an array because if I say I wanted to change the length of the array like this there's a way to do this you're basically going to have to create another array to hold your array so you will have to do my scenes new array and you have to use like the new uh, length of the array so that will be like since dot length plus one and then just copy manually all the all the entries from the first array to the second array and you know and add that extra thing you want to do with a list you just can you just avoid all that and you just say since list dot add and add me the new entry. Okay, so 
that's why I'm going to remove this and or actually I'm just going to turn this into a list and I'm going to also initialize it over here because a list is basically also an object that holds the array you have to instantiate the list okay so we don't need that because our list is already here is already created is already instance we don't need this anymore and we're also going to delete this but let's finish the create scene over here and we're going to write so we're going to create the class right here or let's call it my new scene going to create the class then we're going to be changing all those values depending on the index of our class inside our list okay so it will say my index equals since dot count so I can say we don't need this anymore so I can say this is sin plus my index okay so this will basically all I have to do right now is say create me sin and give it a name the name should be down here you can encapsulate that so I can delete this and write create scene oops let's say this needs to be down here text my index so if i write create scene this is scene and do it like five times and press that oops we have some build errors let's see does not contain a definition for length yeah we need it to use count not length click play ah yeah because the current scene current scene, scene index oh yeah we forgot to add our new scene we need to add it inside our list that's what i forgot uh, not my new scene we need to say since dot add my new scene now we should be fine let's close all this we don't really care all that okay so let's hit uh, not continue let's hit play so this is scene zero let's say next 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 okay now the <laughs> tell me you see how it works like I encapsulated this so right now if I do a loop and say run this 50 times and click back you'll see that I'm now on scene 49 and so on right that's okay yeah that's, uh, that's basically the the logic behind loops it's called you want to run a lot of time a lot of uh, you know a lot of times without really caring what the data is each time you run the loop it could have a different uh, result but we don't really care about that the the loop shouldn't really care about the result except of course a few cases so we have a way to create scenes and we have a way to control what those scenes actually do but since you mentioned dictionaries let's also cover them so instead of saying we have an answer over here and comparing them with uh, a string that equals what we could do in this case is to have a dictionary for string and answer and let's call this my answers technically you can even remove the ID from here entirely because we will have to manually add in this case we'll have to manually add my answers but since I do create my scenes my, uh, over here since we do have a constructor we could basically override that constructor and say my scenes 
and this is now called that is used every time you use the new whenever you say new my sin is basically you're calling this constructor this is the constructor of the class so i can do in this case i can do add the back case which i want to add a new answer and where is next is going to be false this is also a shortcut way to basically do answer back answer back answer dot is next equals false and saying add back the back answer okay this can also work like it's the same way it's just a shortcut to do it the way i do it and of course we need also the next answer keep in mind that i put a comma which means i will add another entry inside well actually it doesn't mean that that's actually an error I need to duplicate this line and I'm going to say add the next one which is going to be true. So how that will change how we even do this because now we're using a list we don't have to go through each of these cases we don't have to go we, because now we're using a dictionary not a list we don't have to go through each of the uh, of the answers we can just do right onto the dictionary of our scene. So we will say current scene dot. Uh, let's see what we forgot. Yeah, we need to have this public. We could just say current scene my answers dot try and get value user line. And you ne need, of course, to output it somewhere. And now I can just check can delete this for its loop and I can just check if the answer is not null if it's null it means there's no valid answer but if it's not null then that means uh, we have found an answer and we can basically just do the logic here this is just a fail safe for our scene index and we return okay and of course if there's no valid answer we do it down here so let's see the two errors we got over here as you see in well, hold on yeah this needs to be public the constructor needs to be public otherwise we wouldn't be able to access it over here so because i do have and i do add my answers i don't need this anymore and we can keep this one but let's also add some space okay so let's just hit play so this is in zero this is in 49 48 uh, oops yeah true is not a valid answer next and back okay so you get how all this works right without comparing yep. the yeah without comparing the strings it's themselves we're just checking if our dictionary actually has an answer we can use in this case okay. so any questions so far anything confusing you um well anything anything that's confusing me i'll just rewatch the video and but uh yeah like it just the, the it, like it just seems like all the i was just <laughs> Yeah, too many just doing, uh, just using brute force, yeah. brute force to write the yeah. software, right? But with yeah, this, exactly. you can see that with this, you can scale this up and down as much as you want. And you will always know that your rendering will be this. And your answering will be this, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's say we want to have a little bit more, you know, we want to have a more... Uh, complex answers not just going back and forth what are we what are you going to be doing there or how you will be uh, handling that of course that's the easy one which because we only have two options so it's a single bull but if you were going to have you know picking a gender for example or moving south versus moving uh, left all of these things so 
you know, how would you normally handle it if it was if you it was you that was writing this and based on all the data you have all all the new info you got today um so you're saying in terms of if it if it goes outside the like a simple if we, yes, if no. you if you had yeah if it goes outside of that scope if it is not just a yes or no answer if it was just do something and each answer will do something much different than everything else how will you have handled that how would i handle it now or how would i handle it before well now or before doesn't matter you know well before i would i would uh kind of like with how well like you you basically just write a new case right cases, yeah I would use cases and switch statements and I'd create a, a loop of, like you said, brute force. Yeah. And now it seems like you just gotta like, um, trying to, trying to still like conceptualize all that, all that we've learned right now. Yeah. It's but a lot it, of, it's a lot of info for yeah, it one is. hour, That's of course. Of okay. Are you ready to take this to, well, not really the next level, but yeah, to kind of make it a little bit more complex things. Um, can we go through this just quickly, briefly, and then, I'm, then, I, then I think I'm ready. Okay, so you, you understand what this does, okay? It creates yep. as much sense as I want, uh, all of them with the same logic, pretty much, back or next. And it basically just adds, creates a new scene and adds them inside our list of scenes. With our scene index, we control which scene we are currently in. And we have a scene then, we want to show it to somebody or to our player, of course. And we basically use this method, we encapsulated this, which it will, it will just show whatever text we have inside our scene. Then uh, we need to, of course, process what the user is playing because the user can click back or can click next and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, processing that line works that if something that the user wrote exists inside our dictionary for answers inside our scene or choices or options or whatever, I think answers is kind of like the wrong uh, way to call this, uh, then we basically do uh, do some logic, which is in this case is a yes or no, or you know, go back or go or go to the next scene. Okay. okay, we're just doing this. We have split our logic into kind of agnostically, just passing data through one case from the other case. The only time that the actual data matters is in this if statement. Okay. okay, because it's what actually changes the data. Everything else uh, so far, uh, except of course from the creation, which is where we create the data, everything else over here just pass the data around. This is where we actually change them. So if this was, you know, like doing battle or something, if it was, uh, you know, a valid hit, then you will change the health of uh, the unit or whatever you want to call that. Okay, mm -hmm. so what I want to change right now is this to make this also agnostic without really caring what this will be. Uh, so we basically need to change, yeah, we need to change this to make this more uh, sophisticated into creating uh, well to actually create you know to be able to handle any logic that we might want is it uh, are we cool with that all this are we okay yeah yeah i'm 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 i'm, I'm holding on <laughs> <laughs> okay and like i said i'll just go back to the video and yeah it's a it's a lot of really... it's a lot of info right now so it, it is a, it is a lot of info, but it's good info. That's the that's what matters. Yeah, well, I hope it makes it a little bit more clear to 
us what we need and uh, ask what yeah, how you need to be my brain are, yeah they're, they're they're coming together a lot a lot better now yeah at least i know for sure that you're not going to be writing any switch statements uh <laughs> <laughs> For quite some time well okay they are useful they are needed a lot but in this case yeah there's just a more simpler ways to do this uh, mm -hmm. let's see something complaints over here oh yeah we have running the application so do you know about delegates do you know how how they are how, how they are used for not necessarily okay so basically delegates are Actually, I don't want to make this, let's think. I think I'm just going to keep it here. Okay, so delegates are basically methods that are variables. So they can be passed around from object to object or method to method uh, without really caring what that method is doing. Okay, so if I wanted to do this, if I want to do this actually, in terms of a method, then I will, uh, in terms of a delegate, not a method, then I will just have to encapsulate first the method. So I will say, yeah, we're now doing them as static voids, which is not really perfect. So I'm just going to do this over here. And I'm going to say to do change scene. Okay, and what that will do is go to the program dot, uh, actually, that's the start class. Yeah, we kind of fall into one small issue over here. Or actually, no, let's do static public int. Let's see if that will work. Yeah, scene index. You're, usually, you do not want to do this in, from one class change the base class of your program. You don't want to do this, but in this case, you know, it doesn't matter how I would normally do it if this was for a client or whatever. You keep another class that you will have all your statics. And I will basically just split this up a little bit even more. So I will have a scene, a class that just controls which scenes we're playing and so on and change the variables from there, not right onto the base class of the program. Just, just you know, just some fun fact or whatever. It's not really in Unity, you don't even go that low, so don't worry about it. So I'm just going to create this into their own two methods. So I'm going to do change scene uh, next. So that will do, that will be program scene index plus plus. And I'm going to also do change scene back. And that will do scene index minus minus. Of course, we also need to write this the fail safe or the fail check. So just to encapsulate it a little bit more, I'll do public static void, chain scene indexed, and I'm going to do bool is next or not. So it's a little bit easier to access. And we don't care about that. Okay, so then that means this doesn't need to be public. And every time I want to change the index, I can just call it from the method. And all I have to do is say yes or no. So changing next is next, then this will be true. And this will be false. We need to make them public so we can access them as well. Okay, so these are just two methods that are going to be doing either moving the index forward or moving the index backward. Okay, we're not calling them anywhere right now. And we need to create a method or well, our answers or options or whatever. I guess because it changed the name it will be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to bring it back to my answers. Okay, so our answers now need to have a variable or some methods that we're going to be changing and we're going to be, they're going to be running their behavior basically. So that's where delegates come into play. And the way we do them is we create the variable first and we say that this is going to be a void delegate. So it's going to be a void method. 
and I'm going to say my answer logic. That's the declaration of the delegate. The actual delegate will be public my answer logic and let's capitalize that my answer logic my answer okay so this is our variable and because it's a delegate it means over here instead of doing this actually let's write it a little bit cleaner because now you're going to be confused so I'm going to create the answer class as back answer okay then I'm going to do new answer then on the delegate I can actually assign a method for example I can say change scene back did you understand what actually happened so if my answer is null over here uh, it's not null so if I have my answer I can say answer my answer dot invoke because we need to check if it's null you can put a null check over here it's a shortcut for dot net if you put uh, the question mark over here otherwise you could just say you could just check first if my answer is not null Okay, it's the same thing if you put the question mark there. So I'm just going to use the one case so you're not confused. I'm just going to do change scene back and I'm going to go backwards. So if I click back, uh, oops, yeah, we do not have the, we forgot to add it on to our answers. So let's add it. And now let's click play. So if I click back, basically it works. It goes back. Of course, we do not have the next. We do not have it as an answer. So if I wanted to add the next answer, what will I have to do? Is basically just do this again, right? Mm -hmm. With the next answer one. But in the case of next, let's change this. In the case in the, the case of next, I will have to do change in next. Click play. Uh, whoops, what we're doing? Change in next. Uh, oh yeah, we are changing the back answer. My mistake. Okay, next, 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 back, back, back. So all of these work correctly, right? So. Can you guess what my next move is going to be? Not necessarily. <laughs> so no what if I wanted to pick up an item or write something else? I could just do console dot write line, for example. I could just go on my next whenever I'm doing a next. I could just go next answer dot my answer pick up. Here's the thing. If you do plus, because it's a variable, you can actually just stack behavior on top of it. So if I do this, I will actually get all these lines being written all this amount of time. All this uh yeah, for basically three times it will write this and change the scene though because it's a plus. If it was just uh, assignment, then it will basically this uh, line will replace this one and this line will replace this one and this one. Okay, that, so that's the magic of delegates. So I don't really need to know what is inside the delegate. My processor, if it finds it, if there is an answer, it's going to invoke it. So I can basically just change create new behaviors new logic that's going to be happening and i'm pretty much done to create an actual game so let's see it in action I'm going to press play so next 
as you can see, I picked up X three times and I changed my scene as well. Okay. But if I go back, I only go back, right? But if I go next, and voila, it plays. It adds all that. So right now, all I have to be changing. Oh, okay, yeah, I see what you're doing here. Yeah, yeah so all I have to be changing is, yeah, it's basically just any code that you're going to write and so on, it's going to be based in these methods and you're just going to be adding your scenes inside here. And that's mm. it. And that's it. You actually have, uh, yeah, you have a project or a project. You have a, a game. So let's say we want to create a simple game. We have two rooms, a kitchen and living room. Okay. And there is an item inside the the kitchen or the living room, whatever. I'm going to uh, delete the, yeah, I'm going to delete the constructor, or let's just comment that, because I'm going to send you the script as well, of course. And let's go and write a scene over here. So let's create a new scene. Let's go create the kitchen first, because that's where the food is, and food is very nice. So, Let's see, from the kitchen, we could go to, well, actually, let's create the text for the kitchen. Let's create, and uh, let's say, this is a kitchen. Very nice, very smelly, or whatever. So, from that kitchen, we need to, of course, know other things that we can add. So, let's actually create the answers first. So, let's do answer. Let's say go to diner, uh, go to living room, then go to living uh, or kitchen dot add my answers, go to living dot ID. Well, we don't have an ID for this. We can write an ID right over here and say ID equals living. This is just an internal ID, so it doesn't matter. Uh, or actually, no, it does matter because we will have to go. I'm just going to do living room, to be honest. Uh, because the user will have to actually write living room to go to the living room, to call this answer. Okay, and I'm going to say go to living. Let's see, yeah, we need to do an add over here. Add. Go to living, go to living. Now, for kitchen, my, yeah. I can actually add the delegates after, or yeah, go to living, it's an answer, come on. Where's the delegate? Uh, hold on. Yeah, okay, I have it as my answer, my answer. So I can actually just do my answer dot add and basically add the logic I want to over here. So, but of course we're going to have to write the logic first. Now we can get a little bit more complex because for dele on the delegates, you can actually pass uh, a target, uh, you know, target index, you can, just add stuff on the or the signature, but you will have to be passing the you will have to be passing this on the evoke as well. So for right now, I'm just going to create a method that gets us to well, the next scene, and I'm just going to write it. It's going to be a little bit dirty because I'd rather just keep making more files for this, more classes, rather than keeping them in the same class, I'll just do another class where I will have all my logic and so on. But we can just say static, let's see. Actually, I kind of hate that we have to make it static. So maybe not do that. Uh, well, anyway, okay, let's do it. Static void, go to, living room 
And because I know what the living room will have the index of uh, one, because zero will be the the kitchen, I can just say go to living, uh, go to, go to living room like this. Okay, which means we can copy paste this. Of course, this is kind of terrible because it's all in the same class. Uh, just say go to kitchen and we want to do scene index zero so we have a living room we need to add it onto well we add it we have it we need to add it on our scenes we need to add our kitchen and there's our kitchen let's add our yeah let's add our living room as well Okay, living room dot text equals this is the living room. And of course living room or we'll have to create the answer again. Go to kitchen new answer. I'm just going to write ID equals kitchen. And then living room dot my answers dot add go to kitchen dot id and then go to uh, kitchen. Okay, then go to kitchen. You can just add the logic of go to kitchen. So basically the same thing, we just go from one scene to the other and we need to assign also the living room over here and uh, we can click play and we'll see we are in the kitchen. Of course, I don't know what answers I could give. We're not really s writing this onto the player. So if I say living room, we're now in the living room. We're now back in the kitchen and so on and so on. But Let's say we actually want to give them a bit more logic so the player actually knows what to do. We're going to go into our render and we're going to say each scene will have some answers. There will be something to do. So we can say we can add a for loop over here. Let's do a for each loop because it's a little bit easier. And we can do current scene dot my answers because it is a variable we will, could say uh, because it is a dictionary not a variable uh, we can get basically its uh, answer from the keys which the keys of course the string actually could we use yeah we can get it as a string yeah so this is now a string and we can do console dot write line item and in this case, we could just try go to. Now, just to make this slightly more easier, after we have, uh, or at the first of our for loop, I'm going to write console.clear. So it actually deletes everything we have before us, before. So okay. when we hit play, I actually see now the options we have and what we can do. Okay, I could say go to, we have to be a little bit more case sensitive in this case because we're not checking for that. Okay, this is a kitchen, very nice. Uh, let's see. Actually, yeah, I just have to write living room. Okay, this is the living room. You can go to kitchen. If we say kitchen, go to living room. So let's say we want to have also items. I'm just going to go a little bit fast with this. So inside my scene, which is the base for our scene. Now we don't, oops, yeah, I don't want to delete that. You will need it. I'm going to comment this out as well. So you'll have them. I'm also going to add a public list of just strings for items. Okay, so let's see. 
we could write uh, okay so on my kitchen I'm going to go into the items and I'm going to say that in the kitchen there is a knife we need to show that to the player and to show that to the player we have to do inside the render the same way we are using this well actually let's do it like this let's say go to delete that and then we will write below each option we have but before we do that we can also write in the room there is and down here we can write current scene items dot count and we'll just write console dot write line and uh, let's see can see uh, okay perfect and uh, let's see item no we just want the item so if there is an item we will see it in uh, this let's try it okay so we see in the kitchen we have a description we have a list of items or any item that exists and we can go to the living room if i write living room i see that there's no there's no items inside the living room okay so let's say we want to pick that item we want to pick the knife we can write let's see now this leads a little bit more thinking because on the delegate we cannot actually pass a new uh, yeah we have the signature empty so you cannot pass something new but well not but you can uh, hmm. Well, we basically need to store somewhere what we need to pick up in this case so let's see how we could do this and uh, we could just say hmm. let me think well it's not going to be a simple solution to do that but we could split the string into spaces and stuff like that but i think we could just say contains yeah okay character values let's do contains yeah we can pass a value okay so let's see i think i'm just going to pass on the answer i'm on the delegate i'm going to also pass the user line okay so on the string where we invoke that we're going to be passing a user line so i could probably write go to kitchen go to mm, yeah that, that's kind of give us some headaches oh we have to okay we have to write the user line mm. Yeah, okay we have to assign first the the id which is something i don't actually like in this case so we're going to improvise and we're going to keep the user line as a static variable uh, we're going to say static string current user line and we're going to save that current user line inside our while loop we're going to save it as this and we can pass it down to the create scene and so on to the process so i can remove this one and i guess we don't even need this either we can just use the current user line uh, but what this allows me to do is to create a method and we will say check for item okay then I can go through my items on the scene items and I can check if the current user line dot contains the 
item okay and if it's true we'll say console dot right line let's say success for now and we'll say because I want to check if this actually works so on to the well on both of these I can delete this one on both of my cases or both of the of the delegates I have to add a way to actually pick something to to pick something up so we could just create an answer pick up pick up dot uh, ID we can just say pick up and we could also do pick up dot my answer check right okay here's another problem that, that arises let me know if you're sleeping because <laughs> you're not making a little sound well, I'm, not, I'm not sleeping my brain is just in like galaxy mode right now <laughs> so much going through it. yeah okay it's a it's a little bit of uh yeah it's a lot of info maybe oh, we, it's a lot of info, we yeah. still we still have split it up maybe i don't know even i don't even know how much we are recording but whatever uh, well, I don't mind. I, I'm I'm learning a lot, but it's okay. Yeah, I can't even Def speak. Definitely revise the revise the video when it's up. Definitely. So yeah. So here's another problem that we are now facing right now, is we have an answer that can actually be used into both of the scenes. So the well, the obviously the obvious way to do this will we'll have been to go to kitchen and just add add it into the kitchen and add it into the living room as well like this and that will have of course worked okay we can see that we have on both scenes we have that so but of course this is not something we we would like to or it's not the way we would like to do it because uh, it's kind of a, per a persistent uh, action you can do the player can do so we could basically say or add in the processor that if the answer inside the scene does not exist we can keep our own do, uh, dictionary of actions which of course will, will just be let's see dictionary can just copy this it will just have to be static since we are in the same in the static class and let's call it user actions okay so let's make this static however so uh, instead of adding it pickup id close it here we can add it into our user actions id and then pickup okay so after we have done this inside our render uh, uh, actually no inside our scene first of all let's see the processor after we have checked that there is no answer uh, of value where yeah there's no how you call it uh, our scene does not have an option or an answer for uh, the pickup we need to check our user actions and it will basically be the same thing we will do user actions try get value current user line out answer answer and we will check the same thing again out answer answer yeah we already have the answer so we can just use the same variable like this and do it like that and do an invoke okay of course the user will always have to will need to know that 
he always has the user actions he can do so I'm just going to write in this case or do so uh, just to you know make make it a little bit more easier to read let's add some space between those cases uh, let's maybe add like that And I'm going to copy this. And instead of my answers, I'm going to say user actions. Okay, let's hit play. So, okay, so if I write pickup right now, it won't really do much because we do not have, we need to write knife. So, actually, it doesn't actually do anything right now because in the room mm, hold on yeah so the other problem problem we have right now is that on the pickup we have items that say with knife you have to write mm, okay I'm starting to get a little bit confused as well right now because we are <laughs> developing this entirely but uh, we need to find for this to work, you need to find all the cases. Let's also add some lines down here. You need to find all the cases because the user can, of course, write pick up knife or just knife and stuff like that and stuff like that. So that's where all your or the logic that you are going to be writing will come into play. For so. Let's say if we wanted to solve this in an elegant manner, uh, you could just do check for item or decipher or process line. Let's say try get value. If there's no answer, okay. Hmm. You could split, I guess. If I had to, to, to guess, you could just split the choices to or the current user line into split in, I don't know, cases. Do one case separator string split options, I think. Remove empty entries, and that will probably just give. Yeah, you could just go for each choice now and run this for each choice. You could just pass it like this. For example, you d can do for each choice in choices. And use the choice instead of the all this. So now this will go through all of the yeah so every word you write it will take them into account and look for you know something but that will actually break the living room no it didn't break it the living room that's good and let's see kitchen but if we write pickup Let's do pick up knife. No, nope, that won't work. Yeah, we kind of need to, to be a little bit more organized in this case. So I'll have to think a little bit how we can elegantly do this. But yeah, it's not really that important right now. But let's say you want to pick up an item uh, from. Mm, For item, yeah, okay. So this will split. Let's do a right line for each choice over here. We're going to solve this, just give me a few minutes. 
Yeah, no worries. Let's say pick up. I want to see. Oh, it doesn't work because we are clearing the previous case. So let's remove this one for now. Okay, so the the split option doesn't work. Split, this will do. New cal. Yeah, yeah. Because I forget as well. Let me quickly search. Sorry about that. I had to run out. Run back in. Oh, well, it's okay. I didn't understand. Okay, we need to use the delimiter. Okay, let's see if that's going to work. Okay, now we have something. So, at least we now split every every word the user is saying. We now split it, and we check by is each word, and we look for something to happen. Okay, so let's say if I delete the pickup. And actually, since we do have that, let's make this into all our choices. Let's make them into an array that we're always going to be using in all of our uh, in all of our methods. So that will be current user line string current line or just line console.readline then what I just wrote down here we can use this over here let's cut this as well and choice choices instead of choices we can say current user line equals line split and let's see. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is basically reading the line the player does. We're splitting it by each space and I'm saving it into a static variable so I can use it in this frame, quote unquote. Uh, so I'm using it so I can have access to each of the words separately inside our processor. So for each of our current user lines let's ignore this one so basically this what this will allow me to do is go to check for item for example and i'm going to say target item is the second current user line the second word the player is going to be saying so if it does if it says pick up or pick knife it will look for check for item and then it will look for the second word he's going to say hopefully this will work so you know so let's see target item let's just see target item can contains item yeah let's do this and uh, let's bring back the the clear but for that to work we need to be using single words it's time so it will have to be pick knife okay 
So let's hit play and we'll see. Pick knife. And of course I forgot that if we have success, uh, that one will work. So I'm going to do if it if the target item contains if it's success. Well actually, yeah, screw this. Let's go and stop clear the console just to see that if it's working. Uh, let's say pick knife. And yeah, fair enough. It does work. It's a little bit of a unorthodox, but it does work. So uh, we now have a way to actually pick things from our scene, which means we could do, we're going to have an inventory of some sort. So I'm going to, to simply do a list string my inventory. Let's make this static as well, just for having access to it. So we could do console line, we could just do my inventory dot add item. But we also have to delete it from the inventory of the scene. To do that without uh, any or a lot of problems from a list, you can go, uh, you can um, go the other way around from a for loop, like instead of going up onto an index, going down. So when you remove something from that list, you won't get an error that you change the index of, of the list. Okay, and that happens like this. You have to do it like that. I. So on my inventory, I'm going to add items. I. We don't want the success. We're not saying this. We can delete this. And I can also say. I can also say my inventory dot contain um, not my inventory can scene dot remove of items remove at the index of our check for items. Okay, so let's also write inside our render what is our inventory of course. So let's write Let's see. Let's just copy this. Your inventory. And for each item you have inside your, inside my inventory, just write the item. And let's do console. Okay. So this will probably move the knife from the kitchen to our inventory. Let's try that. Your inventory is empty. The knife is there. So if I write pick knife and there it is, it's in my inventory from the from the room. So if I wanted to, to make the same thing for dropping it, I will just create yeah, let's rename this to pick up item and let's make copy this and say drop item. So exactly the same thing, but instead of checking the the scene, we're going to check my inventory instead. And if it is contained in my inventory, we're going to be adding it into the current scene inventory and we're going to be removing it from my inventory. And then all we have to do is to create the user action again and we're going to say drop. This needs to be drop this needs to be a new class anyway. So drop item drop item, drop item, drop ID, and this one will be drop item. So hit play, and I can say pick up or pick knife, 
and the knife is in my inventory and I can go to the living room uh, living yeah okay we now have a problem that we are not checking for yeah we are only checking for one word instead of this so the living room ID needs to be a single word same with the kitchen so let's go here so pick up knife pick knife then go to the living room drop knife and we have an error because can see in items yeah when we're dropping the item yeah we need to drop it from my inventory not from the oops not from the scene inventory okay so pick knife then go to living room drop knife and there we go if i go okay. if i go to the kitchen yeah, that's really cool. okay so that's your basically the most basic uh game loop you can have you can pick up an item move it from one room to the other room and so on and so on well especially with that there i feel like that that evolves into so many more game types not just this text like this all does but exactly that is just so like obvious like in terms of traditional like what you see in rpgs like you drop the items and exactly you know float around yeah it's all it's, it's all just that like the way you have an item inside a scene or whatever you can add an enemy and then you can uh, say attack that enemy and in here if you will do some calculation, like if I'd say uh, attack an enemy, all I have to do is check his health, check my health, check the strength, check the uh, random uh, value like uh, a dice drop, and it will give me a result. And depending on that result, I'm going to show something to the player that something happened. Okay, so it's, it's basically all just that. So, yeah, I don't know if you need anything else covered right now, but I think we've done a lot. Yeah, I think we've done a lot. I think I think I'm good for now. Yeah, Just like we have. Yeah, we have. I saw you how to create a basic game loop, in a, well, in a, a little bit in a way that it can be scaled fine. Of course, there is a lot of uh, things that you will have to add if you were doing the, a complete game with this. Uh, like, mm. mostly, basically, how do you detect the what the user has to do? is where the important things are or where you know because there is a lot of cases and you have to write each case uh, separately like saying pick up a knife it's different from saying pick up or pick or pick knife or knife you know you will have to write all those cases uh, independently or basically find a way to just detect what the players actually want to say in this case and yeah i think i don't know if you want to have anything else or to cover anything else but my idea will be to if i was to do this into a different game it would be to just have a little bit of a different way of creating the scenes or a little bit more you know intuitive way because this is kind of hard to to read or go or go to but yeah you i think if you uh, design a game you can basically boil down to what actions the user can do and what happens once they are inside uh, a game because if say for example the old the old adventure games like even the point and click ones i think monkey island one had had it let me find yeah i'm just going to pick a random uh, image, well, a video, this game. Uh, yeah, I think that's in German, but whatever. Uh, you can see that th this will have been the action, so these actions will basically correspond into classes like this. And what these actions do and how you interact inside the level will basically be the delegate you have down here, like pick up item join item remove item destroy item it's not it's not really that many different uh, options like if you have a, a design uh, document you can really find out the needs for your game that is 
yeah i don't know if you if you need anything more helpful but i think that for a lesson this will be a lot of info already to oh, this, take it. yeah <laughs> yeah it's like i just got a boxing match with my brain like i'm scrambled right now <laughs> so yeah, I think, well, I think this is this is way more than enough information for right now. Okay, well, it will hold you. It will keep you for a lot of time at, yeah, at keep least. Keep me busy for 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 a week or so, for a few weeks. Okay, that's good. That's good. If you're doing progress, then it's always good. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to stop recording. Not going to close the call, just so that we can. Okay. okay.